Welcome to the great American epic, where we discuss the walking dead. An epic is by nature vast, and one could begin almost anywhere to discuss it. Today I'll begin just by discussing the here and now. I've just seen Maggie Ree, our protagonist in Dead City. So I'll say a few things about her in what seems like this pilot episode of what we might call The Walking Dead 2.0. We'll have plenty of time to look backwards, but now we're on the edge of the future. These new shows are called spin-offs, but the hope is they will be more like extensions, expansion packs, even perhaps just the rest of the whole ongoing epic. Of this I cannot be sure, but I can say some things about Maggie Ree, whose character, perhaps more than any other, has not received closure. So it's good and right, I think, that she be an epic hero now. The last thing Glenn said to her before he was brutally murdered, something we'll need to go back and back to, the last thing he said, with an eye bulging out of his head, was, quote, I'll find you. Beyond the grave, beyond the brutality, Glenn claimed he would find Maggie. And Maggie, no question about it, needs to be found in this wake, has not yet been found, is lost. And who could blame her? That's a question for all of The Walking Dead, for virtually all of the characters. Who could blame them? Morgan used to say, quote, the only thing worth a damn in this world is people, end quote. And the double meaning there was implied. People are worth it, worth believing in, worth seeking, worth saving even as, perhaps even because, they are worth a damnation. Because all, as the show also repeatedly states, have, quote, done things. Things beyond forgiveness, and therefore the only things for which forgiveness is truly needed. Maggie lost her father the guiding light of the show spiritually until his death. Rick's spirituality is in no small part a legacy of Herschel, Maggie's father, and his mentorship. Died, Herschel did, decapitated, right in front of her eyes. Just when Rick extended to the man with the sword an offer of peace, of community. Herschel died a peaceful death, though it was grotesque, a smile on his face. Why? Because there was Rick, exhibiting faith, even at the threshold of its being sliced in two. And Maggie lost, we all did, her sister Beth, who had a kind of softness about her, counterpoint to Maggie's hard edges. Saw Daryl carry her in his arms out of the hospital. I could go on establishing the pathos of what Maggie has been through. One could do the same with just about every character in The Walking Dead. Quote, tell me about despair, yours, Mary Oliver wrote in her famous poem, Wild Geese, and, quote, I'll tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on, end quote. The hard thing about Glenn's death and what Maggie knows deep down in her core, in her spirit, is that it happened in a phase of guilt, 
it was as though punitive. Negan was in that moment a Satan figure. It is one thing to suffer a grievous loss involuntarily, despite having been and done good. It's another, something more existentially terrifying, to suffer a grievous loss when one has been doing wrong and being bad. Quote, I'll find you, is the last thing Glenn says to her. Glenn had come clean with his conscience before he died, but that's a story for another day. He died in guilt as well as remorse. That's why his eye was bulging, symbol of the fact that he knew, he saw. Maggie led an expedition, let's not forget, to execute men in their sleep, whom she knew nothing about, when she had a choice not to, but exercised will to power instead of humbly availing herself of higher ground. The epic then brought her to her knees. Now, I said we would talk about now. Now she is headed toward dead city, a dead city, where we hope she will find new life. She has to forgive Negan, not just tolerate him. And she has to do so from her heart, because it's spiritually right not because of anything he might do to prove himself. Megan, at this point in time, is okay. What will happen in the future, I don't know. No one exists in a permanent state of grace in this show, so far as I can tell. No one is ever free from the possibility of losing oneself again. Freedom, a central image of this pilot in the embarkation of this journey and this giant epic is the Statue of Liberty. This is the great American epic after all, and Negan discusses it. It shows up in the dialogue. He had a miniature of the statue his father gave him as a child. And he was surprised, he says, as a boy, to think that something so small could in actuality be so big. And that's something like a statement about himself, too. How could someone so small, for we all are really so small, have done something so giant, so horribly giant, as he did in killing Glenn, as far as Maggie's life is concerned. We hear that statement about himself. It's not his intent to say that. It's part of the poetics of the epic, the Shakespearean multivalences in the script. And he says he's never seen quote, Lady Liberty in the flesh. He says all this, of course, in an intimate moment with Maggie. And who is Maggie now except a statue of liberty herself, willing to do anything, and in this apocalypse, free to do anything, now to try to get her son back, named Herschel, in honor of her father, but a statue of liberty, spiritually stagnant, stuck in bitterness, hatred of the world, unforgiveness, inability to forgive. Perhaps Negan does himself mean to communicate to Maggie a subtext here when he says he has still never seen Lady Liberty in the flesh. 
He is waiting. Believe it or not. I believe he is waiting. Even knowing all he has done. For Maggie to return. Even though he never knew Maggie before the atrocity he himself brought down on her. He still hasn't seen Maggie in the flesh. The Maggie we knew before all of this. The Maggie from season two. Sage-like Herschel's daughter. Angel-like Beth's sister. Saint-like Glenn's girlfriend and future wife. Let's see then if we see that Maggie again. The spirit of true freedom, deliverance from the legacy of so much evil in the flesh. Will she come back to spiritual life in this awfully dead city?